You got two choices. You eat nothing but prison fare and you wear nothing but prison garb or you go to work. You get a buck an hour or you get a buck a day, whatever you're getting is a buck more per hour or per day than you were getting before and you can undercut labor unions and you can create an ever intensifying dynamic towards the very same end that was generating the prisoners in the first place and you can do it in such a way as to actually generate a profit for old Bill Gates who gets an assembly for some of his stuff done in the Washington State prison, okay, for a blue jean manufacturer who actually, and they honest to God do this, produces and sells boutique goods under the name of prison blues because it's essentially prison apparel manufactured by prisoners for a cut rate, about a Singapore rate, but you don't even have to transship it across the Pacific. You can just get it out of the Oregon State Prison and sell it in downtown Portland to a bunch of yuppie freaks who want to go down and pay 44 <laughs> bucks a pair. Yeah. Cell phones are manufactured there. The optics for laser gu guidance systems are manufactured. This is military production, okay. Video components are manufactured there. All of these neat little tinker toys that all of us think that we have to have if we're going to be able to survive, even if we don't have a BMW, we need a cell phone glued to the side of our head all the time or we're nobody at all. Well, maybe not the people in this room, but way more people in Winnipeg than I would have expected when I came up here. You know, I saw a guy in a BMW today had one going on each side of his head. You know, he was just yakking away. On this side, he's making something real important like a dinner date. and this side, he's doing stock transfers. Okay. Yeah. And this is made by an increasing component of the economy at this point, which is a slave economy. Screaming about China. And yet, that's an integral aspect of the economies that are emergent in the process of globalization in both the United States and Canada right now. And all of the component parts fit together. Ultimately, the kicker is white supremacy will be a thing of the past. Other than for about a two percentile chunk at the very top of the society, the elite's elite, okay? Because the nature of the process is first to eliminate any kind of human or material or political rights for people of color, creating a vortex, a sinkhole, which makes it possible to do that to poor whites as well. And in fact, they've already done it in places like Appalachia. What it is you see in these snapshot pictures of what has befallen communities of colors throughout North America is a preview of what's intended for the general population in the name of profit from those who manage the corporate enterprises that are made possible by the functioning of the centralized state. What's the tagline there? The tagline there is we've got a common enemy. We've got a whole bunch of component parts which are symptomatic of the whole. And we can spend all of our time and energy running around waving flags and yelling, making persuasive arguments and analyzing all of the symptoms. We can combat sweatshops, we can combat prison labor, we can combat the proliferation of prisons, we can combat the proliferation of supermax conditions or shoes in the prisons. We can combat absence of health care in the prisons. We can try to combat the proliferation of police in terms of personnel, the simple expansion of the numbers of police in society, the proliferation of laws that empower the police. We can try to combat the equipage of the police, the increasingly efficient technology they can bring to bear against it. We can try to, I can keep on going with this list forever, or we can simply get to the real core of the issue, and that is the nature of the state itself. We can make a unitary target that encompasses the whole. The internal colonization and oppression of Native North America is contingent upon the existence of centralized state structures both north and south of the border. The functioning of the various corporations that engage in all of the range of misdeeds that were conventionally dedicated to combating are absolutely contingent upon the maintenance and perfection of centralized state structures north and south of the border and elsewhere for that matter. Pick yourself a point whether it's police or whether it's prisons or whether it's militarism or whether it's environmental devastation. Pick yourself a point and the point comes into confluence with every other point you might pick and that point of confluence is named the state. In abolishing the state you resolve all. Yeah. yeah. How do you do that? Well, there's a whole lot of things that will go into that and that will have to be for another night, but the 
First thing I would say to it, and that's the point that I'll stop tonight, is you recognize the monster for what it is and you withdraw your consent and participation unilaterally and absolutely from participation in, it, in any way that's not coerced. Make that conscious leap and you've taken the first step. And if you've taken the first step, you've just empowered yourself to take the second, the third, the fourth. But we have to understand the nature of the enemy and the fact that it is all of our enemy. On that basis, we can form alliances that serve at least the potential to liberate all of us from the reality that is engulfing us now. Thank you very much for listening. Madakiasi.